Running is the most prevalent sport in the country. Born to Run comes along and introduces this concept that maybe we've been doing it wrong this whole time. Google's book came out and everybody went crazy talking about barefoot running. The conversation has started, which has not been in existence the past 30 years. At points, I remember lying in bed reading it and my heart was just racing. It was like you were on the starting line ready to go. The book has opened up a whole new world for me in looking at things with regards to running. Born to Run complemented and reaffirmed taking this evolutionary approach to health. Running is a skill and there are better and worse ways to run and Born to Run has helped make that more of a public debate. Born to Run is this bizarre adventure story that takes place down in the Copper Canyons of Mexico where there is this lost tribe, the Tarumara, who run these fantastic distances of 200 miles at a time. And the book is really centered on this one-of-a-kind race that took place, pitting this bizarre group of American ultra runners against the Tarumara. Chris McDougall. You know, I don't think he's capable of writing even a boring email. One of the things that makes the book fun is that he makes everything exciting. You get this group of weirdos together, that's what made the race so exciting. Chris collects characters, particularly in ultra running. One of the great characters is Barefoot Ted. He is a pioneer. Everybody else is running in sneakers, and he is barefoot. They're not your average of Joe or Jane. It's just a bunch of lunatics who love running, going up against an indigenous tribe of people that are born to run. The Tarumara have lived in seclusion since the 1600s. Before reading the book, most of us, runners included, never heard of them before. You know, I hear these people who are removed from civilization and there's like not a shop from thousands of miles and they've got no money and they run simply because they love to run. What's so enticing about the book is the idea that we can learn from evolution. Humans evolved to be long distance runners because when we diverged from chimps, we became bipeds. And one of the big problems with becoming a biped is that you become slow, you can't gallop. And we know that at least by two million years ago, ancestors were hunting. Except the first projectile weapons only appeared 200,000 years ago. So for 1,800,000 years, we're killing stuff with no weapons. So how are we doing? Persistence hunting. Most mammals can't cool down as well when running as humans. A group of runners will run down an animal. And the animal, of course, will run faster than the human can. But the humans will track it and then chase it again. And you keep doing that over and over again, its core body temperature is going to go up and up and up and up, and eventually it gets heat stroke and the animal dies. There is this sort of aha moment that humans are designed to run. For most of human existence, we got by just fine with almost nothing on our feet. But then we started to try to re-engineer the foot. We created running shoes. And cushioned, engineered, structured running shoes are the worst thing which has ever made contact with the human foot. Before, you couldn't run and land on your heel. It was just too painful. Now, you're constantly banging down on that heel. One of the advantages of running barefoot is that it forces you to run a bit more as we were designed to run. The first thing you're gonna do is get right up on your forefoot and you're gonna bend and flex your ankles and your knees and you're naturally gonna absorb the shock instead of having hit all those joints up your leg. I don't think everybody could do that. I myself have a flat foot. I know if I try to do that, I just rip my knee right out of its socket. You really have to have the right musculature, the right articulation of your bones to do this kind of thing. We're so used to the world today as it is, we think it's normal to wear shoes and we think it's abnormal to go barefoot, which is really preposterous if you think about it. You know, as an evolutionary biologist, I can tell you shoes are the fad and that barefoot running is, is the natural, normal state of running. What I found so shocking was that there wasn't a single scientific study that showed that modern running shoes reduce injury. People I know that had given up running, they just weren't able to run with back injuries and knee injuries took up barefoot running and are running like the wind. i got to tell you the truth, the only controversy comes from podiatrists. From a podiatry perspective, we really do walk a certain way and we call that the heel to toe phase of gait. And if that sequence is changed, 
People who are doing this barefoot running, for example, were then prone to having injuries. The running injury rate hasn't changed in 30 years because the shoes don't work. No, there are people with lousy feet, myself included, and if I did not have a really supportive running shoe, I probably couldn't even do the kind of exercise they want to do. No, just take your shoes off, and that will answer all of your questions. This is something I disagree with McDougall about. It's no magical fix, you know, just take your shoes off and all of a sudden you'll become a perfect runner. It doesn't happen that way. The mistake that everybody makes when they try barefoot running is they do too much too soon. Everybody can learn to run this way, but you can't do it overnight. Well, since I read the book, I'm looking at how people run a whole lot differently. The first time I read about people who are doing this barefoot running, I said, this is all crazy, this is all wrong. And now I'm looking at it for the second or third time from a different perspective. I think the best result that has come from this book is the fact that a conversation is taking place which hasn't taken place in 30 years. People are talking about running for them again. Any other activity, golf, swimming, badminton, it's all about techniques, all about form. Only in running were you told, well, I'll just buy some shoes. I just want people talking about it. Let them explore for themselves, but as long as they understand that it's not the shoes, but it's the style, that's the winning ticket.